Good evening, and welcome to our annual Cosmetics and Fragrance Marketing and Management Capstone. You know, I'm feeling a little sentimental this evening because this is the program's 20th capstone, something of a milestone, and I'm happy to tell you that I have seen them all. I well remember the first one in a conference room outside my office that seated all of 40 people. So today, as many of you know, when we are live, we get standing room only crowds in the half auditorium, which seats 700 people. And there's a good reason for that. Each year, the capstones are so impressive and so relevant that I always think, well, we've reached the top, the apex. They can't get any better. But of course, they do. Every year, there is something totally new and unexpected and exciting to capture our imagination and our attention, something that contributes to the advancement of the beauty industry. So I'm going to leave it to Professor Canlian to introduce you to this year's topic so I can use my time to brag a bit about the program's achievements in these last 20 years. From its inception, it was meant to be a seedbed of industry leaders, and it certainly has succeeded in that. More than 350 people have graduated, and we count among them chief marketing officers, general managers, executive and senior vice presidents, as well as heads of marketing. You'll find them in these leadership positions in companies such as LVMH, Chanel North America, ELF, Estee Lauder, Google, and L'Oreal, to name really just a fraction of their influential placements. Not only does the program produce leaders, but it produces important research, as I mentioned earlier, so much so that it is now considered a think tank for the industry. Each year, its classes conduct two global field studies in different regions overseas and a field trip to Silicon Valley to explore technology's impact on industry. The pandemic prevented travel this year, but it didn't affect the research. In fact, the research you will be learning about tonight will be presented at the Cosmoprof North America trade show in Las Vegas in August. Another measure of the program's success is the fact that many of its adjunct faculty are alumni, and many of its alumni now serve on the program's advisory board as well. This really is testimony to the value our alums place in the program, and I find that very gratifying, particularly since I remember so vividly what it was like 20 years ago when it was really an experiment. We didn't know how or if it would sustain itself, let alone grow. The program has achieved these heights under the leadership of its chair and founder, Stephen Canlian. His vision, his strategic thinking, and sheer commitment to the program, its students, and to the industry have played a major role in its evolution. And now I turn the program over to him to provide an overview of the class of 2021's research and its methodology. So, Stephen? Thank you, President Brown. This year's research on the future of consumerism chronicled the pandemic-induced changes in the lives and behavior patterns of citizens around the globe, commencing with an intensive week in January of virtual meetings with consumer experts on five continents and culminating with original quantitative research with U.S. consumers. You will hear two research studies, the first on the seismic changes in global consumer patterns, demographics, and macroeconomic policies during crisis. The second focuses on the U.S. consumer, analyzing the lasting changes to consumption habits and envisioning the future of retail experience. Here are the insights, predictions, and recommendations of the class of 2021. March 2020. A deadly virus sweeps around the world. Overnight, our lives are put on pause. Today, the WHO declared a pandemic. Issuing a stay home, stay safe order. Directing all of our residents to quite simply stay at home. Oh, 
This was 2020, a year of unpredictable global forces. With 3.6 million lives lost, the pandemic has been a human, social, and economic crisis with few parallels. The UN estimated that 1.6 billion vulnerable workers in the informal economy lost their access to income, meaning no food, no security, and no future. COVID-19 has been especially harsh on women who are disproportionately represented in sectors offering low wages, few benefits, and the least secure jobs. And as care needs spiked during the pandemic, women stepped in to fill the gap at a cost of almost $11 trillion. That's three times more than the size of the global tech industry. COVID-19 disrupted other key consumer blocks. While ageless consumers are projected to account for 33% of total spending by 2025, they have been left behind in the pandemic and reported record-breaking depression and anxiety. Lastly, Gen Z is the largest growing global consumer block. In contrast, they are exiting the pandemic feeling resilient and optimistic. Our research shows that more than half of this cohort are looking to government to more directly hold companies responsible for social well-being and for putting people over profit. For the first time since the Great Depression, global economies plunged into recession together. With $9 trillion wipe off of global GDP, this is truly a global crisis and no country has been spared. The progressive system of globalization faltered. More than 9 in 10 people worldwide lived in places with travel restrictions, and countries became increasingly isolationist and self-reliant. This shocked supply chain systems and deeply affected global trade. As a result, 73% of suppliers experienced disruptions and consumers suffered. More than one in three consumers globally were forced to switch from their favorite brands simply because of inventory shortages. The pandemic underscored that we are all part of a global, social, and economic system far larger than ourselves. In times of universal economic decline, there's an opportunity to question convention and reimagine the global economy in a new light. Welcome to the new macroeconomic model, the accordion economy. Given constant reactive boom and bust cycles, innovation and new growth drivers are needed. Economic expansion will occur when we unlock new opportunities in the social, environmental, and digital space. The role of brands and organizations must be reimagined as vessels to fulfill social aspirations and profit motives. This past year of isolation has led to a year of global introspection while simultaneously exasperating the disparities that already existed. For example, the IMF estimates those living in poverty increased by 131 million people globally. In turn, people's perceptions of the roles of government, private corporations, and citizens have changed. The pandemic clarified that we are one global community and heightened the importance of values both in society and in commerce. Peter Drucker, the founder of Modern Management, saw this true north of business all the way back in 1954. According to Drucker, the point of companies at their core needs to be about humans creating more value for other beings. The World Economic Forum has recognized this critical shift in global mindset on the purpose of business. The question remains, what is the mechanism that allows companies to fulfill human and societal aspirations? With shareholder capitalism, it's easy to be swept away by the short-term value generation. But the consumer mindset has shifted from short-term gratification to long-term investment. And consequently, we as companies need to respond in light. We need to be shifting to a new phase of capitalism, placing the consumer at the center of our business ecosystem, understanding that by satisfying the consumer, all other needs will be addressed. Since 1976, corporate strategy has revolved around building shareholder value, but the global events of the past year have cemented that this is no longer a productive way of conducting business. Following these events, we will be going over three categories most important to our primary stakeholder, the consumer. 
First being planet and the private sector's interest in protecting future resources. Second, the responsibility of ensuring that companies perpetuate social ethics and equity. And finally, the consumer's desire for all areas of their lives to reflect the merging of their online and offline selves. We're now going to dive into the first of these three categories, planet. According to NASA, the planet's average surface temperature has risen about two degrees Fahrenheit since the late 19th century a change driven largely by increased carbon dioxide emissions into the atmosphere and other human activities. These hotter and drier conditions can make fire seasons longer and more dangerous as seen by the wildfires in Australia and California in 2020. The effects of climate change are real and so is the global population's trash problem. It is reported that the cosmetics industry produces more than 120 billion units of packaging annually. In fact, Netherlands-based group LCA Center found that if refillable containers were used for cosmetics, as much as 70% of carbon emissions associated with the beauty industry could be eliminated. We knew our effect on the environment before COVID, but what happened when we were all stuck at home was astonishing. When humans left the natural world undisturbed, we were able to see the Himalayas because pollution had cleared and turtles hatched on undisturbed beaches. What can we do to ensure the human imprint on the global ecosystem does not destroy the planet? Right now, most of the world operates within the linear economy of take, make, consume, and dispose. We believe one of the necessary actions to combat our effect on the climate is to move from a linear economy to a circular economy of make, use, and return. Today, only 9% of the economy is circular. According to Accenture, it is calculated that the opportunity to profit from the conversion of the remaining 91% sits around $4.5 trillion by 2030. This is where opportunity meets desire. Consumers are willing to put their wallets where their values are. 57% will change their purchasing habits to reduce negative environmental impact, and 71% are willing to pay a premium for brands that provide traceability. If consumers are looking for transparency and are willing to pay for it, what does the future look like? Imagine a place where the conscious consumer could have access to all the information about a product a place that by scanning the barcode, they could see its ingredients, its origin, its impact on the planet, to name a few. And when the product is finished, the consumer is guided on how to properly dispose it. Let's see some examples on the market approaching this type of idea. The French app Yuka allows you to scan the barcodes of food and personal care products. Here, you get detailed information for each cosmetic product and see its impact on your health. If there is a low score, you can will recommend similar items that are a better choice. In China, Unilever and the Alibaba Group created an AI recycling system moving consumers to a waste-free world. In the video, a consumer approaches one of the AI recycling machines and scans the barcode. Once the consumer inserts the product, the AI machine automatically recognizes the type of plastic and will sort it in the right storage place. Once the operation is done, consumers get compensated with Unilever's coupons. Protecting the planet is everyone's responsibility. So how can brands effectively influence consumers to follow them in circularity? First, educate consumers with all the information needed to make conscious choices helping them understand the benefit their choices create. And second, reinvent their narrative. Greenwashing only weakens the consumer brand relationship, so bring creative campaigns to create an environmental positive behavior. To conclude, the circular economy is essential for consumers today. It is time to reinvent your business and get into the circular mindset. Brands and retailers that come into sustainability will build consumer trust and loyalty. There is no planet B, so it is crucial for brands to innovate on a circular economy. Remember that this represents a 4.5 trillion opportunity, 
not only a huge potential for economic growth, but it also accelerates society towards a sustainable future. And now I'm going to pass it off to our second pillar, people and community. The global pandemic has simultaneously emphasized the interconnectedness of people and our collective isolation. The impact of individual actions on the collective highlighted the importance of social responsibility and equality. In fact, 86% of people believe there is a lesson to be learned from COVID-19, including those about social justice, religion, and personal relationships. Underlying issues really came to a head due to the catastrophic events of 2020. The murder of George Floyd and the resulting fight for Black lives, the increase in Asian xenophobia, and most recently, the rise of anti-Semitic attacks due to the growing tensions in the Middle East. These events have brought people and communities together in the fight for social justice globally. Additionally, due to months of distancing, we have just lived through what the US Surgeon General coined as a social recession. Despite our efforts to connect digitally, this in fact had the reverse effect, causing a loneliness paradox. The feeling of loneliness in young adults increased due to lack of contact. In the UK, a COVID-19 psychological well-being study showed that 36% of overall survey respondents felt severe loneliness during the time of lockdown. People are craving human connection now more than ever. In fact, seven out of 10 people are willing to switch brands if it supports a social cause. 60% would even pay more for its products. So how as we, as an industry, can lead by example knowing that 74% of consumers agree that the way companies conduct themselves during social justice protests will impact whether they do business with those companies in the future. A best class example is a major league baseball. The state of Georgia recently passed a new voting bill which restricts and suppresses the minority vote. In response, the Major League Baseball decided to boycott the state by moving its 2021 All-Star Game out of Atlanta to now Denver, Colorado. Coca-Cola, which is based in Atlanta and sponsors the event, followed suit. Once the pandemic hit, there were a few essential shortages such as toilet paper and hand sanitizer. For elderly and at-risk people, these items were a challenge to obtain. As a solution, Aldi UK created a box with 22 essential items, including food and toiletries exclusively for this demographic. In addition, companies can create opportunities around accessibility in underserved communities. For example, people living in small Indian towns are often unable to shop online because of home delivery issues, despite having the intent and money for shopping. Store King set up small kiosks with tablets and internet at neighborhood shops, leveraging its well-established network of distributors. Customers then select products from Store King's online platform and get them delivered to the shop within 48 hours. In our own research survey results, we found out that 61% of consumers find value in their purchase when it makes them feel part of a community. Consumers hope brands will make will take meaningful and transformative action towards people and community. A simple social media post or donating clothes won't be enough. Consumers expect brands to have a sense of purpose, diverse and inclusive representatives speaking to them on behalf of the brand, a point of view to social events, and support their communities in ways that are authentic and relatable to the consumer. Finally, Brands should leverage technology to increase accessibility among underserved communities. This leads us to our last non-negotiable pillar for the consumer experience. Prior to COVID, the world relied heavily on foot traffic and human-to-human -human interactions to sustain businesses and satisfy consumer demand. As lockdowns became the new normal, consumers were forced to shift their behavior picking up new habits likely here to stay. This past year, e-commerce surged, businesses went digital, and new digital revenue streams emerged. Our research suggests that lockdowns and digital acceleration caused three key shifts in consumer behavior. First, 
many opted to digital communities. Second, many turned to emerging channels for income. And third, many relied on digital retail. But what does this mean for our future? We predict that consumers will increasingly seek collected experiences online and in store. We also predict that social will become the new storefront through content commerce. And lastly, we predict that retail stores will more aggressively integrate digital. Tomorrow, brands will need to create communities that facilitate meaningful exchanges beyond product and services because 75% of consumers want more human interaction, yet 64% feel companies have lost touch with this. We recommend brands reinvent retail experiences by designing spaces that enable community, nurture connection, and build tools to entertain one another. The future is social, and social is the new storefront. The speed in which social commerce continues to grow demonstrates that it's here to stay. Because of this, we see opportunity for brands to enable the social commerce acceleration by creating brand generated content studios in store for enhanced consumer experiences and community building moments. The shift to online shopping will impact consumers decision journey as they rebalance returning to physical stores and continuing to shop online with new heightened expectations. Innovation and fluidity are essential at both fronts. Our research predicts that augmented reality will be at the core of retail experiences tomorrow. More than 100,000 stores are expected to integrate augmented reality by next year. This integration will merge physical and digital worlds to elevate and create new shopping experiences, both in-store and online. So what does this retail reinvention look like? It consists of three key tactics adaptive environments, tech-powered convenience, and augmented retail. Consumers want their shopping environments to change as they are. Adaptable communication and visuals at digitalized points of sale will create these adaptive environments. Brands must merge their digital and physical retail experiences to create digital fluidity and humanize online experiences and customer services. Retail innovation will give brands strategic tools to capture consumers' attention and showcase their core values. Within these reinvention tactics, there are several integrations that will change retail environments forever. The integration of smart displays will lead to more interactive and dynamic digital displays throughout both mass and lux environments. The integration of artificial intelligence will help brands leverage consumer data to create hyper-focused shopping recommendations. Incremental innovation on digital platforms will humanize customer services online. The integration of augmented reality will be the most disruptive. Devices become the new lens into the retail world, transforming spaces, delivering full immersion experiences, and providing hyper-personalized shopping environments. So what should you do now to start your retail reinvention? First, focus on retail beyond product. Co-create disruptive retail experiences with consumers and community at the core. Next, generate new opportunities and environments for content creators to share brand-inspired content and experiences. And last, but most importantly, invest in augmented reality and emerging new technologies to digitalize physical spaces, both in store and at home. So what's in store for the future of global consumption? If the last 18 months have made us realize anything, it's how fragile the state of our existence is. External forces can wipe away our jobs, comforts, and health in an instant. Consumers are seeking to gain more control over their lives, and consequently, our research has uncovered a shift in consumption. From short-term instant gratification to more long-term worthwhile investments. Simply put, purchases will become a form of self-investment and accountability. 
Imagine that we as consumers all had a stock price and the purchases we make would drive our value up or down. For years, we've been keeping tabs on everything that matters to us most, our health, finances, fitness, and even our screen time. So why should purchases be overlooked? Our solution is the Personal Impact Index, a new management tool where consumers can track each purchase they make see how it aligns to their core values, and brands can then leverage that data to predict future purchasing behavior. This new measurement will be evaluated by three key principles, planet, experience, community. Brands that recognize these connections and prioritize them in their business model can capitalize on the trillion dollar circular opportunity. As brands evolved, and prioritize this shift from shareholder capitalism to consumer-led capitalism, the first step is to share the how. And if you don't, know that consumers will make assumptions on their own. So take a moment to consider, what's worse? Immediately, brands need to think about how they will deliver on these key areas that will drive global consumption. However, simply making the change is not enough. Use this time to reevaluate your communication strategy and show consumers the how. For example, data will be a critical way to provide experiences to consumers, but you'll need to invest in how that data will be leveraged to make the consumer feel safe and gain their trust. The key is to be proactive and not reactive. For consumers, accountability will become traceable. After making a purchase, consumers will be able to see its real-time impact reflected in their PII. Consumers will start to keep themselves and each other in check taking accountability into their own hands versus brands. We also envision the PII serving as a measurement of financial health akin to a credit score. This more well-rounded view of consumers will become extremely valuable. Just imagine if banks would evaluate it in the consideration of a loan. And there is a massive untapped opportunity for brands to capture the consumer's obsession with self-tracking. If a consumer knows they can see the immediate impact of their purchase, they will be motivated to buy your product versus the competitors. This is why brands will begin to label products to indicate PII traceability. And in turn, you'll start to capture invaluable client data. Gather data from your consumer's PII to understand what their values actually are. If your consumer values planet above all else, how does this impact your strategy? You can then leverage this information to make purposeful change from product innovation to brand communication standards. And taking this just a step further beyond the consumer and beyond the brand, PII can be expanded to develop a new credit rating system to support growing global economies, a measurement that could offer emerging nations a path in the global economy. Countries will be the final step in PII adoption. They can start by holding institutions accountable, providing tax breaks to those with strong scores, fueling a further case for change. Changes are happening so rapidly that it's almost impossible to predict the future. But PII is on its way and you need to get ready. First, consider the planet in all business operations. What is the end use of your product? Are you tracking all steps of the supply chain to align with your standards? Next, treat the consumer as your primary stakeholder. And finally, never has the retail world been so poised for disruption as we re-emerge from the pandemic. And this calls for an overhaul of traditional omni-channel thinking. We have evolved beyond simply the value of transparency to a consumer demand for the transparency of values. So now the question to ask yourself is, how are you showing up? During the New Year celebration, ball drops in Times Square as Americans are anxiously excited for what this new decade will bring into their lives. No one could have predicted the societal fallout driven by the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Grandparents were laid to rest too soon. Unemployment skyrocketed and New York City's pulse went flat. A light was cast on the social injustices of our modern society and forced consumers to look in the mirror. As the world went into a deep sleep, consumer behaviors and values shifted, creating a new modern era of consumption and a post-pandemic society. Change was on the horizon, and the COVID-19 pandemic reprogrammed every facet of our lives. Specifically, in terms of digital acceleration, with an expected 29 billion connected devices by 2022, which is three times the human population. There's no denying that we all feel the need to be always on with no option to power off. On average, we spend eight additional hours a week answering emails, and just over half of us claim our partner is distracted by their phone. Our team has coined the term screen time engorgement, which is the notion that we're spending exponential time in front of screens and devices. Pre-COVID, we spend 17 hours a day in front of a screen. We have added two hours to that during lockdown. And because of this, we're three times more likely to feel isolated. From an economic standpoint, the pressures are just as significant. Since 2000, education, healthcare, and housing costs have increased six times faster than our income. Add to that the weight of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic with 169 million cases globally and growing. Sum these two together and we are experiencing the most severe recession in almost a century. The economic recovery will be trying. According to McKinsey, four out of 10 don't anticipate our finances will return to normal until the beginning of 2022. These original insights about the constantly changing consumer reminded us of a shape-shifting chameleon. Just as a chameleon's color changes based on their mood and environmental factors, we as consumers adapt to our needs and purchasing decisions. Our colors are more vibrant than ever. We seamlessly move between the digital and physical worlds and shift between wanting one thing but needing the other. These tensions have formed the chameleon consumer. Over the course of six months, our CFMM graduate class completed primary and secondary research on the future consumer. We interviewed and surveyed all age groups in the US and spoke with 28 industry experts. We set out on a mission to understand the post-COVID consumer mindset and the impact the pandemic has had on our core values. Through this, we identified nine core values of today's consumer. These values ebb and flow and change on a whim, just as a chameleon changes its colors. There are three buckets of values, for me, fulfillment, and fundamentals. Our first bucket comprises of values that are more introverted, or the four me values. These are fluidity, experiences, and customization. Our second group of values are the fulfillment values, or those that provide us with a greater sense of being. These values are community, wellness, and sustainability. And lastly, we find our fundamental values, which rely on logic and practicality. These values are simplicity, price, and convenience. When we look at these values holistically, we can see dynamic tensions form. Let's look at our four me values first, fluidity, experience, and customization. We no longer want to be labeled by traditional, cultural, societal, and generational norms. Like a chameleon, our identity is fluid and shifts based on our environment and our multiple needs. 78% of younger consumers want to define their own identity. And over the past year, 
shifts have occurred in every facet of our psyche. With fluidity, we have moved from a one-size-fits-all mentality to fluid and experiential. The pandemic has forced us to work from home, and 60% of us prefer to stay that way. We've shifted from a traditional nine to five to fluid hours and locations. We are embracing no ownership as renting has allowed us to be more fluid with our options. By 2025, the rental market is expected to grow by 34%. The economy has shifted from ownership to sharing. Our next for me value is about experiences. We are looking for moments over materials and 74% of us prefer collecting experiences rather than possessions. We've shifted from wanting possessions to wanting memorable moments. Our proprietary survey highlights that 83% of us would repurchase from your brand if you provided an incredible customer service experience. Loyalty shift from product to experience. Customization is key and rounds out our last for me value. Do you feel like an anonymous ticket number? 69% of us do. We're no longer trying to fit in. We're looking to stand out. Data is the new currency. 90% of us will share personal data with brands for a cheaper, better experience. From seeking data protection to seeking ease of experience. Our second value set fulfillment discusses community, wellness, and sustainability. We entrust brands to create a sense of inclusiveness once found through religion and social community groups. Our proprietary survey proved that. It's no surprise post lockdown, our survey proved that 61% of us find value in a purchase that makes us feel part of a community. We're shifting from transactional interactions to seeking connections. Our own survey proved that 83% of us buy locally in order to help and protect our communities. We're shifting from thoughtless consumption to purposeful purchases. The wellness industry is on the rise, growing by half a trillion dollars in just the last four years. We're burnt out. According to Ogilvy, 80% of us want to improve our wellness, shifting from detrimental to wellness-based consumption. In 2012, only 23% believed it was important for brands to lift our mood. Fast forward seven years, it's gone up to 86%. It's clear we're all stressed. A shift from stressful to stress-free. We've arrived to our last value, sustainability. There is a sustainable struggle and brands need to do more for us as 65% say it's not easy to buy sustainably. Responsibility has shifted from consumer to the brand. So far, we've covered the for me and the fulfillment values, two of our three Fs. These values often conflict, posing a sense of tension between each other. There's an internal and external struggle. We want to feel unique, yet we seek out community to feel a part of something larger than ourselves. The fundamentals represent our last set of values, simplicity, price, and convenience. According to our proprietary research, we need simplicity. More choices do not lead to more purchases. 65% of us say that we feel overwhelmed when shopping. Our options are shifting from endless to curated. In fact, 64% are more likely to recommend a brand that provides a simple experience. We are shifting from the more the better to less is more. Moving into our second fundamental value, price. The value of the dollar is now defined by how we profit from a purchase. We are spending less. 75% of millennials actively budget their finances. So brands must ensure that there is a strong value proposition that goes beyond price point. We're shifting from splurging to spending prudence. But higher price point does not equate to higher quality as proven by our survey. To complement our findings, McKinsey declared affordability will be the leading factor when shopping post COVID. From loyalty influenced by labels to loyalty influenced by monetary value. And why do we value convenience so much? Well, despite living longer lives, we are actually starved for time. 
one third of us feel that we have less time than we used to. From value for money to value for time spent. And according to the happiness index, the more time we have, the happier we are. For example, in the Nordics, where the average work week is less than 40 hours, there is a higher sense of life satisfaction. This brings us to our last fundamental shift from always on to on for fulfillment. Earlier, we analyzed the tensions between the for me and fulfillment values. Now that we've gone through all nine values of the community and consumer, well, let's explore the additional tensions. Our first tension is emotion versus logic. We may truly want to be sustainable, but price is often a deterrent. Or we say we want to shop local to support our communities, but behind the scenes, we shop nearby for convenience. Our second tension is slow versus fast. We want a leisured and customized experience, but we also want instant gratification. As you can see, by the complexity of the shifts in consumer values, the old marketing rulebook is no longer effective. By unlocking this new set of consumer values, we have cracked the code for you. To future-proof your brands, we have developed a survival guide that will allow you to capture the chameleon consumer. The Chameleon Credo is your new survival guide, consisting of five rules that show you how your brand needs to adapt. The first letter of the Chameleon Credo is A, acclimate to the new standards. Our research uncovered the hard fact. Consumer satisfaction is at the lowest it's been in 15 years. In the acclimate to the new standards portion of our Credo, any extreme statistic we uncovered with 90% agreement or higher was determined a truth. The first truth is customer experience is paramount. Almost 100% of consumers say service is crucial. One bad experience can permanently change the consumer's perception of your brand. Conversely, a positive experience can increase spend by 140%. Our second truth is there is a need for speed. Our exclusive survey determined 91% of consumers expect fast service that is seamless and frictionless. If it's not fast and seamless, 70% of consumers will abandon their cart and store. Our last truth is consistency is key. According to our research, 90% of consumers want a seamless omnipresent experience, but yet 87% of consumers think brands need to improve in this area. The future is bright. How will your brand reignite consumer satisfaction? The second letter is D, deliver intentional newness. We are suffering from suffocation, which is the notion of feeling stressed by owning too many things. Newness no longer means new product. Newness means it's new to me. Consumers no longer see value in buying new products, spurring a growth in the pre-owned market. Pre-owned products tend to have longer life cycles. Consumer values are shifting to focusing on higher quality items that last longer. Suffocation extends beyond material goods. We are also overwhelmed by brands' communications. In fact, 98% of us are generally annoyed by excessive brand emails. The future is less. How is your brand delivering intentional newness? We are now moving to the third letter of the Chameleon Credo, A, which stands for accept brand fluidity. As we've uncovered in our value section, we are craving fluidity. When we say to accept brand fluidity, we don't mean changing your brand DNA. We mean offering your consumers more control. We are gravitating towards brands that offer what we need when we need it. This goes beyond delivery, integrating flexibility throughout our entire 360 degree purchasing journey. Whether that's through flexible payment options or choosing to buy online, pick up in store, or fast shipping. Now think of a brand that is providing this experience, shopping seamlessly from multiple devices, fast delivery options, and easy returns. I'll give you another hint. It's one of our chameleon's habitats, Amazon. The future is fluid. Is your brand flexible? 
The next letter of the chameleon credo is P, predict the shift. Consumer behavior changes as frequently as a chameleon changes color. Our FIT survey showed 75% believe the drivers shaping their purchasing decisions shift based on the purchase they are making or the circumstance they are in. Marketing research firms have tried to predict consumer behavior tendencies through identifying new consumer types. However, consumer behavior is still volatile. Consumers can no longer be labeled or put into a box. Our team coined the term segmentation extinction to highlight that old marketing tactics are obsolete. Our team launched a study to develop a tool to understand when and why consumer behavior shifts. We put consumers into four hypothetical situations to understand which value drives purchase intent. The outcome, our mood map. The first scenario was buying a house. The number one value was quality. With our job offer scenario, we saw a shift. The number one value, time and convenience. Notice with scenario three, yet another shift. When in the market for a new shampoo, the most important value was price. Our fourth scenario brought our fourth shift. When buying a new shirt, respondents valued flexibility the most. In fact, 100% of the time, flexibility was marked as a top three driver in all scenarios we put consumers in. This goes to show the future is changing. Are you ready for it? Our final rule of the chameleon credo is T, transform the experience. During lockdown, the home habitat became a multi-universe, a place of comfort and escapism where consumers worked and socialized. Our team has coined this idea as the home habitat and it is here to stay. Within this new environment, consumers are engaging on new platforms and brands must interact where we are consuming content. A great example of this was rapper Travis Scott, who hosted a virtual concert via Fortnite. Over 27 million viewers joined, making it the largest in-game gathering ever. Brands that capitalize on providing an interactive advertising experience within the home habitat will win. Hulu has tapped into interactive ads with the launch of Gateway Go, putting offers right into the palm of the consumer's hand. We are 75% more likely to engage with an ad when multi-targeted through several platforms. It is clear that the future is transforming. Is your brand transformative? And now that we've revealed your brand survival guide, we will leave you with a set of tangible takeaways to ensure brand success as you navigate through this fluid consumer landscape. Acclimate to the new consumer standards and universal truths by ditching the bot and providing 24 seven support, automate your checkout and reduce the steps, deliver critical consistency and audit your channels, deliver intentional newness. Brands need to be more intentional in their communication, in product development and across buying channels by offering personalized content. Accept brand fluidity. Consumers want flexibility to shop anytime, anywhere. Create that frictionless end-to-end -end experience for them and infiltrate multiple customer touch points to achieve omni-brand presence. Predict your consumers shifting values with our innovative mood mapping tool. Tailor your marketing message and channel execution to value-based marketing. Also, price and flexibility are top decision drivers. Lastly, transform the experience. Meet consumers in their homes and provide elevated bespoke experiences. Dare to test and learn new ways to advertise and make it highly interactive. If you take one thing from our research, it is that you simply cannot put the chameleon consumer into a box. Their message to brands, don't label me. Thank you.
We are pleased to present the annual graduation awards for the CFMM class of 2021, recognizing students, faculty, and alumni for their contributions and achievements. We begin with our annual scholarship recognition, honoring members of the class of 2021 with consistent high academic achievement and intellectual contributions in the classroom. Recognized this year are two students, Ryan Larson, Group Director of Fragrance Marketing for Chanel, and Annalie Rice, Senior Marketing Manager for Giorgio Armani Beauty at L'Oreal USA. Congratulations, Ryan and Annalie. In the same category of scholarly excellence, the program's annual Outstanding Scholar Award is presented to the student selected by the faculty for top scholarly and intellectual contributions throughout the two-year curriculum. This year, the faculty awarded a tie. Congratulations go to Ali Meyer, Senior Manager of Global Marketing for IT Cosmetics at L'Oreal USA, and Allison Trya, Director of Marketing and Global Retail Lead for Redken at L'Oreal USA. This year's two outstanding scholars. Each year, Cody generously sponsors a Professional Achievement Award, which is given to recognize a program graduate selected by the Alumni Association. This year's awardee not only had an inspiring multi-decade career at the Estee Lauder Companies, but is also a graduate of the inaugural CFMM class of 2002 and has taught in the program for 15 years. Congratulations to Mark Polson, Principal and Founder, Polson and Associates, a creativity and innovation consultancy for organizations and professor of creative management. Another key pillar for the program is our talented adjunct faculty. Each year, the graduating class votes to present an adjunct professor with the Estee Lauder Company's Faculty Leadership Award. This year, the students wrote in full-time faculty member Dr. Brooke Carlson, who completed her 11th year of teaching in the department and is transitioning this summer to her new leadership role as Dean of FIT's Graduate School. Nominations describe Dr. Carlson as student advocate, our biggest cheerleader, goes above and beyond, authentic, incredibly supportive, the glue of the program, born to lead with excellence and inspire everyone she touches along the way, devoted to her students, multi-hyphenate marketer, and I would not have survived the program without her guidance. Congratulations, Professor Carlson. The L'Oreal Student Leadership Award is selected by the students in each year's graduating class. This year, the votes were a tie. The first recipient was described by their peers as dynamic, motivating, visionary, respectful, and having maturity of judgment. Congratulations to L'Oreal's Allison Trya. The second recipient of the L'Oreal Student Leadership Award was described by classmates as emotionally intelligent, motivating, a high performer, and strategic. Congratulations to Chanel's Ryan Larson. Our final award is an official college designation as Department Medal recipient for the program's graduating class. This year's winner, selected by the faculty, is L'Oreal's Allison Trya. Dean Carlson and I hope you were inspired this evening by the work of the beauty industry's think tank. We thank our corporate partners for their continued support and know that they, along with the students' managers, families, and friends, join the faculty in congratulating the talented class of 2021 and all of tonight's honorees. Thank you.